Yeah. How this session happened? Um, so I had posted a video where I uh, claimed factually that uh, you know after all these years, thousands and thousands of years of existence of Ayurveda and about more than a decade of existence of the Ayush ministry, uh, there has not been a single uh, formulation that has been clinically approved or recommended by any clinical societies in India or otherwise globally, which has come from research point of view from Ayurveda. Uh, so we can just go on talking about what the past has done. For example, I'm sure people will bring the example of Sarpaganda, which is Rasarpain and all that. That's all of no use now. Nobody uses all of that now. So let's leave the past in the past and talk about what uh, current medical practice has uh, in the context of, uh, you know, these alternative medicine, especially today we are honored by the presence of Vaidya Omka. Uh, he is the person who uh, put forth the suggestion that we should have a conversation because he felt that uh, we have some deficiency in looking from both sides, you know, from a medical science perspective and also from an alternative medicine perspective. So I just would like to, uh, you know, uh, give the mic to Vaidya Omkar if he wants to start off with uh, a few uh, introductory lines for this session. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Abby, and thank you very much, uh, Unitary Seb. Uh, I'm really uh, honored and pleasured uh, for giving me the opportunity to put forth my views, or rather, the views of Ayurveda and how uh, we all can help in bringing wellness in the community. Okay, uh, I would like to first. I would like to first uh, place my point that uh, this debate is not uh, Ayurveda versus modern medicine. Because uh, neither me nor any of the Ayurvedic fellow uh, or a practitioner, genuine Ayurvedic practitioner, basically wants that we, we should be working against each other. Rather, we want a symbiotic and uh, coexistence of all the pathies or all the belief systems which can help together to bring wellness in the community. So let there be a a uh, variety of options available for everyone which are genuine scientific and definitely helpful for the society so that's the only purpose why uh, i asked dr abby that let's have a discussion and uh, let the best come out of this discussion so that's it dr abby if you want to add your points yeah i mean uh, let us take this discussion right from where you stopped uh, you mentioned that uh, you know it's it's a discussion regarding how we can coexist. We in the sense that how all the medical practices can coexist. And then you um, ended that particular uh, sentence by saying uh, we all have to uh, do this in a scientific way. Uh, we, I don't. I mean, not just me. The scientific world, the medical science world, does not consider Ayurveda to be scientific. It is a pseudo science. Yeah. So how would you uh, how would you content this fact that how can something that is not scientific coexist with something that is actually scientific? You know what whatever has been said and done for the past two thousand three thousand years or whatever, Ayurveda has remained a pseudo scientific practice without any actually clinically beneficial outcomes within the patient community or in the preventive medicine community or in the preventive medicine aspects. And this conversation regarding, uh, you know, coexistence and all that is just philosophical. You know, let's get to the meat of the matter. It's just philosophy. You know, you, 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 we, we say that let us all coexist in peace and harmony. And you can actually see that people are getting born right, and left, right, left and center everywhere, every day. So that, that's just philosophy. You know? let's, let's, let's just stick to the medical aspect of this, the scientific aspect of it. So I want to know how would you make Ayurveda an accessible and a scientific practice? So that it can coexist with real medicine. Okay. So the first uh, uh, statement what you commonly make and what the general scientific, so-called scientific community make is that Ayurveda is a pseudoscience. Now let's understand what exactly is the difference between a science and a pseudoscience. So your common argument is that the sci science is 
the one which can be tested and replicated and can be falsifiable. So uh, first and most important part about Ayurveda, one, it is absolutely not only herbal medicine that is Ayurveda. Okay, so only herbal medicine is not Ayurveda, only dietary restrictions is not Ayurveda, only lifestyle guidance is not Ayurveda. Ayurveda is itself a, a, a concept as in totality, which has their own uh, scientific principles and the whole science is built upon that. Like they have the principles of Tridosha theory, Dhatu theory and uh, the disease development is completely based on that. The medicines, herbal, polyherbal, herbomineral, all are based on that. One part. Secondly, uh, Ayurveda never ever directly goes with any generalized approach. So uh, it's a general assumption in people's mind that if it is herbal or if it is named to be Ayurveda, that means it is generalized and anyone and everyone can take it without any fear. It is not what Ayurveda ever says. Ayurveda is completely personalized and based on your needs, your disease condition, your causality and your requirements. The treatment or management for that particular diseases starts right from removal of the causative factors then ahara, that means diet, then lifestyle, and if at all required, the medication. So this is the overall uh, performa of Ayurvedic treatment. Third point which you said that Ayurveda is not progressive and it does not, uh, it cannot be tested. So it's again a myth. If you look at the history of Ayurveda, it started off 2000 years back and there has been constant addition or deletion of some of the principles which are useful are added and some of the principles which are not relevant for that particular time are removed. So the recession and their procedures were added to Ayurveda, were adopted by Ayurveda somewhere close to 1000 or 2000 years back. Then there has been constant addition of different herbs, their properties and their medicinal values whenever they were developed or they were experienced based on evidences. Never progressed or it is not progressing. Now also, if you look at last 50 years or so, Ayurveda has adopted all the modern technology. They have started using the modern technology by development of medicines, by diagnosis of diseases, they have started incorporating both the things together and bringing a system which can be helpful in current era. The whole principle, foundational principles are Ayurvedic, but they have always kept adding and deleting whichever are useful and whichever are not useful. So it is time tested, it is always evolved and they have undergone rigorous trials also. I partly agree with the fact that they are not as uh, big in number as the modern medicine is. There are multiple reasons to it, but yes, they have constantly been working on uh, validating its efficacy and safety over the period through all the rigorous methodologies. So I don't think there is any point in calling always calling it as a pseudoscience because all the principles can be tested by all means and they are open for testing by everyone. Um, okay, uh, okay, lot, a lot to unpack here. I have made some points. Uh, first point is that uh, you did not answer my question. And uh, second point is that uh, let us start with uh, adding and deleting mm. uh, something that is useful and something that is not useful. Can you please tell me something in Ayurvedic practice or in the principles which has been added or deleted in the last thousand or two thousand years so that it is now clinically applicable and we are using it for our patients? Yeah. Just, Just one example. example. Yeah, I have answered that actually. So one thing, even if you look at the Samhita, basic Samhita, Charak, Sushruta and Vakvat, Charak Samhita mentioned a lot about uh, 
doshas and especially it mentioned only about vata dosha the different types of vata dosha in the next samhitas there were mention of uh, additional doshas and their fundamentals also or their differentiation into five different types so that was ayurvedic point of view addition one secondly rasa shastra the mineral met, uh, metal and mineral preparations which are currently used in uh, some of the ayurvedic practices are evolved and are accepted in last uh, 2000 years so the development of rasa shastra mm-hmm. is not from the samhita period charak sushrut varpat never mentioned metal and mineral preparations yeah could you please uh, tell me an example of a herbo mineral which is currently accepted approved and currently in use where it is found to be useful in any disease condition there are thousands herbo mineral there are herbal. thousands of medicines there is there is arogya vardhini no just tell me arogya vardhini what arogya vardhini is used for what it is used majorly for liver conditions which liver condition any sort of liver conditions where we as per our principles find that there is accumulation of vata and kapha dosha primarily and its functioning is less then we use that no that is what you believe in right there is no science or evidence to it so let me just give you a simple example i have a patient who is coming with jaundice because of hepatitis b virus infection hmm. and i have another patient who is coming with jaundice because of hepatitis a virus infection how does arogya vardhini act equally in both because hepatitis b virus is a dna virus and hepatitis a virus is an rna virus both have different natural history of the disease one can cause chronic liver damage and liver cancers the other is self limiting how do you, how does arogya vardhini act in that exactly that's that's the problem what exactly uh, makes you all feel that ayurveda is not scientific see you have made the diagnosis as per your system when ayurvedic treatment has to be given it has to the diagnosis has to be made as per ayurvedic uh, conditions so you mean that you will treat both with arogya vardhini and other things that you see in ayurveda may, and may, basically the no, may or may not be it solely depends whether no, it you have to in our you have to make a choice it has to fit in our conditions Just to fit in our so there is no your condition and our condition. No hepatitis B is universal. Sir, there is no hepatitis B in the USA and hepatitis B in India. Hepatitis B is universal, but do you see all the similar symptoms in each and every patient of hepatitis B? There has to be yes. According to natural history of disease, there are different kinds of presentations. Exactly. That that's what makes it different. Yeah, and so that's the difference. Exactly my exactly. point. That's so, the difference. What I feel generally makes. We believe. So, how does Ayurveda diagnose acute liver failure due to hepatitis B versus a chronic cirrhotic liver because of hepatitis B or a decompensated liver disease because of hepatitis B? Yeah. So, the di- diagnosis is always made upon the history of the patient, where we identify which kind of dosha can be uh, vitiated, could have been vitiated because of his faulty diet, lifestyle, or whatever those reasons may be. So, how do you, uh, can you please explain that? How do you look for that specific dosha in acute liver failure okay. versus a chronic liver yeah. failure? so if it is acute liver failure because of uh, any particular toxin or any any kind no, of no acute hepatitis b okay so in hepatitis b also whenever see basically the difference you will have to understand that whenever if we get infection of any sort there are two things happening one that virus attacks your body and second your body is not able to handle that deal with that now we look at the, no, no, let's 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 please come I'm, back to the question i'm coming how do how do you minute, uh, appreciate an acute liver yes, failure let us know no, uh, why dear you are just diversing from the I'm subject not, we have no time we are exactly one hour i'm not please diversing be very specific to the I'm point i'm not diversing please listen to me when i'm talking okay so when we understand the disease we understand what has gone wrong in the body and because of which this kind of situation has occurred so we evaluate the patient based on the history like certain uh, lifestyle or dietary things can vitiate your vata dosha certain things can vitiate your pitta certain things can vitiate your kapha based on that we may no, have talked about hepatitis b come on sir what i am saying please understand okay you are no you, no, no. you, you are not saying anything that is understandable you are talking about vitiated pitta and kapha exactly. and whatever you did not tell us how do you measure with pitta or how do you measure vata where is it what is it no idea i'm just giving you direct diagnosis and how do you approach this sir patient. your diagnosis and you're going on talking about some pseudo scientific principles that is mentioned in your textbooks which is written 2000 years back this is not a scientific discussion i'm very sorry please 
if it is not a scientific discussion then why are we talking about all these things exactly that is why the topic Sir, is needlessly trying to bridge the gap did you see the topic heading the that. title we have given for this topic? exactly if you don't do, if yeah. you don't allow me to speak there is no point in discussion okay no whatever you are speaking it's, is everything that we already read about bata pita kapha vishayashan and what not yeah. I am giving you an exact scenario where we need you to treat this patient. Yeah. So what are the lines that are available? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's go to find. Let's let's just. Yeah. There are thousands let's of patients. Let's just go directly. There are thousands of patients who are being uh, treated by that, and they are getting benefited. Part yeah. part of them are getting benefited. Yeah. So how does Arogya Vardhini act in hepatitis B? How does Arogya Vardhini act in hepatitis B? What is the mechanism of action? It's pure science question. Through which mechanism you want? So you tell me. You have to know. Ah, no? but Arogya Vardhini's mechanism of action in hepatitis B related genres. So from Ayurvedic point of view, all the ingredients. If you if you are interested in listening to Ayurvedic point of view, I am tell I will tell you that. No, you let's let's talk about the ingredients. Yeah, there are many ingredients. One of the ingredients, major ingredients, is kutki, which is picrolyza kuro. Then there are chitrak mula. Plumbago, there is shilaji, there is neem leaf. So yeah, so how do they act yeah. on hepatitis B one? Their major function is to stimulate liver function to uh, uh, to what you say? Uh, let the pitta flow properly, the bile flow properly, and improve its concentration, quality, and quantity, so that it stimulates your liver to. Deal with the infection probably. I am not sure. There are no so, studies done, to my understanding, which can talk in your language how it works on chilla uh, hepatitis. Yeah. So basically, you have no mechanism of action. No, there is, is right? mechanism of action, but we have not studied that. Yeah. If you have not studied it, then how do you have a mechanism of action? Sir, there were. There is mechanism of action as per Ayurveda. Why do you want to prove? Yeah, so that action is not studied. That is what you believe in. You have not, you have not actually given me anything to prove that it acts on the hepatitis B virus. You just said that pitta will flow and the concentration will increase. Is that how you treat hepatitis B? Yeah. And I mean, really, I'm quite scared for the patients who go for hepatitis B treatment via Ayurveda. Do you know what happens if you don't treat acute liver failure because of hepatitis B? Or a, a cirrhotic liver because of hepatitis B, patients can land in something known as decompensation. Absolutely, they come with blood vomiting, have ascites, and they can go into encephalopathy and die. Just a minute, sir. And you think I don't want to think can prevent all that? I'm not saying that. See, see, the in the beginning, you are the one who said no. I don't want to be given for uh, liver disease. It is given for liver disease. You have bring, uh, you have brought the point of acute liver failure. I'm constantly telling you, yeah. it is completely based on the patient's situation and condition whether we want to give it or not. It is absolutely not a one-to-one -one situation, situation uh, association. My situation, no, no. See, it's my situation is very clear. I'm talking about acute liver failure because of hepatitis B virus infection. There are different types of acute liver failure conditions. Yeah. People can have acute liver failure because of hepatitis A also. So right. And because we need drugs also. Right. So, so how do you approach? I mean, you forget the approach. You said that Arogya Vardhini can actually uh, improve hepatitis B condition. No, I never said uh, that. In a patient, I never said that. No, you said in the no. beginning it, it, it can help treat liver diseases. You said that, that. it's a recorded uh, session. Uh, please, please, please. It's a recorded please, session. Please. I have said that can help, but it completely depends not in hepatitis B per se. It depends on the diagnosis based on Ayurvedic parameters. I have not created any so association. So, if a hepatitis B patient comes to you, and that you know, I mean, see what what we know is that what medical science has found out that is that hepatitis B virus infection has to be treated with antivirals. Yeah. So we have tenofovir, alfenamide, we have antecavir, we have some very new drugs in the pipeline which can help clear the virus, protect the liver, prevent further damage, and help pa patients uh, from developing a lot of complications. Right. And in your case, you are just saying that you know you will just look at diet, you will just look at the uh, you know the mindfulness, and you will just look at vata, pitta, kapha, which you don't know how to even measure, and you have not studied. You have no mechanism of action also. And uh, I am not sure how you are going to treat these patients when you say that you have treated thousands of them. See, basically, please understand. We never treat any acute liver condition or any acute condition unless we have the evidence to treat it. 
if we have the evidence or we have the confidence that we can treat it then only we take up the patient otherwise it is always that you we first advise the patient that please go ahead with whatever modern medicines you are taking you can even ask your modern medicine doctor whether uh, he can continue with these ayurvedic medicines or not if he does not agree then kindly just restrict to your diet and lifestyle what we are saying and follow what we are doing if they agree we can uh, work simultaneously in the integrative manner to help the patient to feel better no no so i am confused i yeah. am confused here you are saying that ayurveda is not pseudo scientific yeah, it is not. a very scientific yeah. practice so so why do you want to go and ask the modern medicine practitioner for uh, any 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 need sir, to do anything for the sir, patient you can take care of the patient uh, from the first absolutely. time absolutely we can take but we do if we do not have the evidence or confidence that what my statement was there are certain doctors or uh, ayurveda practitioner vaidyas who have the confidence and uh, experience also in treating these kind of patients they do take it but it is not a generalized practice in ayurveda also there are certain conditions where they have clearly mentioned that tatra tanvandaryana adhikara means the surgeon or the uh, relevant expert should be looked into uh, this patient and it is beyond your capacity it is also mentioned clearly in ayurveda so it is not that each and every um, ayurvedic doctor would take each and every patient okay let's let's uh, take 5 seconds so, Let's yeah. take five seconds to read the title of our space and uh, go back to the point where we started. That uh, Ayurveda is basically trying to uh, needlessly bridge the gap between science and Ayurveda. So, if if Ayurveda isn't pseudo scientific, uh, how how does it uh, have the proofs or how does it go ahead with the treatment if it even doesn't have a mechanism yeah i'll tell you how it can help i'll tell you one example there are multiple studies if you go on cochrane library also there are two major reviews on cochrane where it has uh, it has shown that how integrative medicine with ayurveda in schizophrenia and diabetes are have proven useful okay partially useful the major study long run studies need to be done that's what their inference is one study was done uh, specially on turmeric and giloe it was a study done in uh, uh, tb medicines patients receiving anti tubercular medicines it was it was a study done on around 400 patients uh, it was blinded study and uh, two groups are there control group and the treatment group for one group anti tubercular medicines and ayurvedic medicines turmeric and gudauchi were given to one group and the second group received only anti tubercular medicines it was observed that in uh, patients receiving uh, both the medicines ayurvedic and anti tubercular medicines the incidence of uh, hepatotoxicity was way lesser and it did not uh, hamper the efficacy of anti tubercular medicines in negative way so this is one of the examples where ayurveda and uh, this modern medicine can work together where we know that there are certain limitations to modern medicines and it can be bridged by the inclusion of ayurveda or any other uh, pathi i would say whichever is good and okay. integrated yeah so i mean uh, coming back to uh so this is a lot of word salad because when you are, when we ask you a single question you are going you are answering it with uh, so many unrelated things but i just want to uh, make make a point about your cochrane review okay. about diabetes okay. i just looked it yeah. up and what is exactly written here is that due to methodological deficiencies and small sample sizes small, small sample sizes we were unable to draw any definite conclusions regarding efficacy of herbal medicines so what you just said now is absolute you know you are just lying there is no evidence of any use of any herbal medicines in diabetes this is cochrane review and i have i have opened it in front of me right so that is wrong and regarding your giloy that is absolute nonsense because there is no study which proves that giloy is useful for any liver disease condition or any other disease condition for say for say exact especially in tuberculosis then we have shown that with the use of giloy about more than 200 cases of patients with severe autoimmune hepatitis has been reported from india alone you know it's it's just i mean the way the confidently you people lie 
to the community regarding your pseudo scientific practices is applaudable. And I mean, I must give it to you. See, but I understand why you have to do this because it's your bread and butter. But let's be very, very, very uh, truthful here. There is absolutely nothing that Ayurveda can offer in healthcare. No, absolutely nothing. And you have not proven it also. I mean, we asked you, I mean, I asked you a simple question about a mechanism of action of an Ayurvedic drug, Ayurvedic Vardhiri. And you just told us any, all the contents in it. You asked and me about nothing more than that. No, I did not ask you. I just asked, how does the ingredients work as a mechanism of action? And I told you that. You, you still have time to, to answer that. You still have time to answer that. You said kutki and you said uh, so many other things, uh, meme and something. And I there. told you How does it act in hepatitis B virus infected? No, you did not tell me. I told you as per Ayurveda. You just said it helps the pitta flow. Yeah. The pitta flowing does not treat hepatitis B, sir. People will die. Sir, this is a recorded session and people can always go back and listen to this. Definitely. I am not denying that whatever statements are made. And first, of course. Yeah. I mean, see, let us let us just uh, bring a clean slate here, okay? Clean slate. You said that, and this is what every other Ayurved says, that there are deficiencies in modern medicine practice. So let us fill those deficiencies with integrative medicine. See, the whole aspect is that modern medicine never says, or medical science never says that it is uh, complete. It never. It is deficient. And the deficiencies will improve with further testing and further experimentation. Then all things will get thrown out of the window and new things will come. That is how we bridge deficiencies. Not by using a pseudo-scientific practice like Ayurveda which, to fill that gap. See, there is no role of Ayurveda in management of any acute or chronic disease. You just mentioned a few, few, few uh, minutes before that we won't treat any acute disease. Come on, the government of India and the Ministry of Ayush gave treatment guidelines for severe COVID. How do you explain that? How does any herb work in COVID? Simple question. Yeah, please tell me. So for First and most important part is that I have been constantly telling you that how modern medicine looks towards a disease is completely different than how Ayurveda looks towards a disease. Our exactly, that is science and pseudoscience. You can be it anything, it, it hardly matters to me. Okay. No, no, it's, it's not what matters to you. Exactly. It is what it is. It is a, Whatever you this say. Is not a, this is not an uh, debate or okay. argument. No, this is a fact. You can just look on the web anywhere, any scientific. Even, even your Ayurvedic practitioners who have stopped practicing Ayurveda, pra stopped practicing it because it is a pseudoscience, because they could not get any benefits in patients and they were just deceiving them. So let us not sir, go there. Sir, let's sir, go beyond more that. More than 10% of modern physicians quit their practice. Okay, this is a fact. Okay. The, where? Yeah. Which, 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 uh, where did you get this information Sir, from? Look at all the pharmacovigilance, uh, people. Pharmacovigilance is for drug adverse events. Yeah, course. but that is, is not, not for practice. looking at that uh, is not a practice. Uh, doctor dropout. That is doctor, not practice. Do, 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 do you know what, do you know what pharmacovigilance is? I have worked there as a drug safety physician for two years. Yeah, so why does a pharmacovigilance has anything to do with doctors dropping out of practice? They are not practicing. They are not practicing, they are completely doing the right Exactly. So that doesn't mean modern medicine is bad. Similarly, if an Ayurvedic physician drops out Ayurveda and opts for any other field, that doesn't mean Ayurveda is fraudulent or Ayurveda is deceiving something or someone. Okay? So Ayurveda is, how is Ayurveda not fraudulent then? Please tell Ayurveda me, because you have not shown any evidence. Sir? No, that is because the our, 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 evidence, evidence, so sir, right. our evidence is visible to patient and that's why you can see there is increasing awareness and increasing uh, accessibility and uh, acknowledgement by whole no, population. No, forget about accessibility. That is because the of advertisements. Accessibility is because of advertisements and promotion, not because of evidence. Sir, if there is no there is no evidence, people would never go to any Ayurvedic physician. If they find that I am deceiving them or I am causing any kind of harm to them, they will never come to me. Okay? Still, if people See, are you going, don't know what is happening in your practice. Okay, so let's not go no, personally. No, I am not going personally. Let us not I'm go I am giving there. you a random okay. example. That, this, if Ayurveda is not working, this is supposed to be a scientific discussion. This is supposed to be a scientific, right. but so you are going personal. That's why I am giving you personal. Let us... Let, 
I mean, you already started talking about your uh, practice and you are telling me I am going personally. I am telling you not to go personally. I am not talking my example. I am saying that I am giving an example that if any doctor is not treating the patient in the right way or not giving the result or causing any kind of harmful effect, in any pathy, the patient will never go to him. If they feel that what doctor is... What is a pathy? Huh? Pathy means any system of pathy? medicine. Okay. No, that is not what pathy means. This, don't get into the verbal jargons. Okay. And no, see, it because it is a scientific description, you have to use the right yeah. terms for so the let it be importance. Any, any people should understand it. There are a lot of people system. listening to this conversation. Yes, it is any medical system what I am saying. It is any healthcare system. No, pathy means, means, please please check the dictionary. Pathy means denoting feelings. Okay. It is not any medical system. Fine. Right. I agree. Right. So that is wrong. So this the, the, the term of allopathy and all that I is completely wrong. Word it is medical science and it is I have never used the word allopathy. I have been using a modern system ah. of medicine. I duly respect that. I duly respect all other systems of medicines. See, it's not about respect. Yeah. Right. It's about evidence. Yeah. So you have not provided any evidence. I, I think we have almost passed a half an hour here. And we have you have not shown any evidence where you can actually give us any good uh, details regarding or convincing details regarding how Ayurveda works or Ayurveda is helpful in the current scenario. All you, all everything that you have been saying is that you know Ayurveda has to be used along with modern medicine. You have to ask the permission of modern medicine mm -hmm. doctors. Uh, they will will take care of diet. Uh, will take care of the pitta vata. Come on, this is philosophy. That where is the science? The first and most important part of being constantly saying every time that Ayurveda is based on its own scientific principles. If you want to understand how Ayurvedic medicines work, you have to understand the basic principles of Ayurveda. You no, cannot, no, please, you please. Cannot, the basic principles are pseudo scientific. That is your perception Sir. and your view. No, no, it's not my perception. Prove it, how they are pseudo scientific. You have not proved anything. You have not proven us that it is not pseudo scientific. You are just telling it is not, it is not. Just by saying lies multiple times does not make it a truth. That's what I want to say. Why is Ayurveda not a solo science? Please tell us. I have answered it in detail and you were saying that it's a verbal salad. I have answered it completely no, you, in detail. You, you, I have told you that no, Ayurveda you, is... You do not answer anything. See, Ayurveda is always being progressive. It has always evolved over the period, starting from Chara to till date. It has always evolved. It has also taken into consideration modern technology wherever there is required. So even in dosage formulation, Sir. everywhere. Okay? If it has not Sir, been evolved, then, then the, the question remains. Sir, let's think I mean, uh, how is Ayurveda scientific or pseudo-scientific? Like it's, uh, we, we agree that it's been progressive and it's been adding uh, new Samhitas to it. But uh, let, let's stick to the point how Ayurveda is uh, scientific or pseudo-scientific. No, I, I mean, I, I just have a single question. He, he'll go back to Vata, Pita, Kapha and Samhitas. That is not what I want. I'm saying, he's saying that, I mean, you are saying that uh, Ayurveda has been progressive. So if it is so progressive, it's been almost almost two, uh, 2,000 years and it's so long it has been progressive. Tell me one drug or a formulation that is recommended by wholesomely by all clinical societies or any clinical society worldwide in India or otherwise worldwide for any disease condition from Ayurveda. Just one. You mean recommendation or recommended means or approved means? Approval recommendation for any disease condition as per clinical guidelines where you said that Ayurveda can work with modern medicine. Where is it recommended? Which clinical guideline? Just one drug I need. Just one herbal formulation or one traditional formulation. I don't remember it often. May not be there. Or not there, probably. So does that mean Ayurveda is progressive? It is progressive. I am accepting. So then why are we not seeing results? That's what I'm saying. In the first statement itself, I have agreed that there has been some lacuna from Ayurvedic point of view, Ayurvedic uh, physician point of view that we did not conduct so many researches or full-end researches. There are multiple reasons to that. 
and that's why we are not exactly able... yeah. so why are you not conducting multiple researches on ayurveda right. when you have 3000 crore rupees from the ayush sir, ministry that available is, every sir, year 3000 crore rupees is this year's budget which was increased to 20% this year okay okay make it 50 crore okay. make it 50 so crore if it is 50 crore if it is 50 crores how do you expect in 50 crores a full length drug to be developed okay what it's not about developing no you already have your drugs yeah. with you so, you have so, basic like ayurveda vartini vilwadi and all to get it at nothing to develop here to get it approved from sir that there are two reasons i am telling you one first important reason is whenever you want to develop a drug you have to pass it through all sorts of clinical trials we we all are aware of that phase one phase two phase three phase four it requires whole lot of amount whole lot of funding that is there government cannot fund it completely and private uh, private companies would not be interested in this because all the ayurvedic literature comes under public domain so they cannot patent that medicine and that's why even the industries are not interested in uh, uh, developing that drug further if they can sell the no drug, this is utter nonsense this is come on you are you are misleading the audience this is here. a fact you are misleading the this audience is a fact. no no it is not yes. come on This is not. This is absolutely not the right answer. You are misleading me. Absolutely not. You are saying that you have no money and nobody is interested in Ayurveda. Come on. People Can you see the amount of Ayurvedic industry marketing going on here? I am not saying people are not interested. I am saying no no company is interested in conducting all these trials and spending so much of money if they are not getting the patent out of it. It's not about patent. Yeah. Forget about patent. It's it's about a drug that can be approved and recommended for any disease condition. We started with that question. Yeah, you are going somewhere no, else. There are two, two, three drugs which are developed by Ayush Ministry. However, their studies. Ah, can tell us? Yeah, yeah, very good. Come ah, on. However, is, their studies not are not that great. They need to be studied further, and even all the Ayurvedic physicians would agree to that. and it needs to be studied for so you mean to say we need to wait another what 1000 2000 years no why they need to Because be studied so long and we still don't have anything we have everything not every time you need to have mm-hmm. a drug which is approved by us fda the only thing what no, let us not go to us fda ah. we are in india ah. only we can have a serious one or you know looking at that let us not uh, See, you know no. uh <laughs> take the name of us fda to you know uh, okay or in a different context okay. okay so so let's let's let me just clear this air for the people who are listening here the audience i mean this is just for them not for uh, vaidya uh, the reason why ayurvedic drugs or ayurvedic formulation cannot be tested is because they are all prepared on the basis of ayurvedic principles known as tridosha theory um, and these tridosha theory is basically your old obsolete humoral theory Uh, known as this kapha pitta and vata and all that and uh, you, and these are just philosophical theories you cannot test it you cannot make a hypothesis out of it you cannot measure it and you cannot do uh, uh, you cannot actually find out any outcomes from these so basically the whole premise comes back to that initial saying that because ayurveda is pseudo scientific you cannot test it and when you cannot test it you will obviously not get any results or outcomes which is why when i asked why they are the question that tell me one formulation that has come out of ayurvedic research since last 2000 years he could not even say a single drug name so they, this this confirms the fact that ayurveda is pseudo scientific but why they will not uh, agree with me because it is his practice and nobody is going to say that i am a pseudo scientist right so let us just leave it that that's a personal opinion but this is the fact Sir, I have been constantly. Okay, leave it. Next, if you have any other question. No, I mean, uh, I mean, I have a lot of questions, but I, I think if, every time I ask a question, uh, it's it's just going to get diverse. I mean, this is exactly why I wanted this session. uh because see i have been debating and arguing and you know even very friendly having friendly conversations with a lot of ayurvedics i mean i have a lot of friends in the ayurvedic uh, circles and uh, this has been going on since last 6 or 7 years and what i have been uh, facing and experiencing from the ayurvedic community when it comes to scientific debate 6 years back it is still the same even now and uh, why the omkar is just the prototype of it i mean he talks about the same things because 
um, Ayurveda is a kind of indoctrination. You know, people are made to believe that these things that has written about 2000 years back has some, some value even now. Of course, it has value. It has great value in uh, the history of medicine. Right. But it has no current value in healthcare. But there is another value for Ayurveda and I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not actually uh, rejecting this part. There is good value and that value is in the business of healthcare. So if you want to run a good business, if you want to have a good business, make money out of it, just market a product and write Ayurveda formulation on it or become an Ayurvedic practitioner, start an Instagram channel and then market your products for skin and healthcare and stuff like that. But when it comes to the real treating patients, you know, like what I said about hepatitis B, or what I talk about uh, actual diabetes, management of diabetes related complications, tuberculosis, malaria, dengue, you know, all these and vaccine preventable diseases. I mean, it has to be from medical science point of view. Your vata pita kapha does not cut it. And what? It's plain simple. And what about non communicable diseases? Of course, there are medical guidelines from evidence based medicine for non communicable diseases. There are clinical societies dealing with it. Please look at the American Diabetes Association, the Indian Diabetes Association, the Indian Society of Gastroenterology, the Critical Care Society of India. Everybody has everything set up from evidence point of view for communicable as well as non-communicable. Okay. So if, if, there. if there are so many guidelines and so many drugs developed, why hasn't ever these non-communicable diseases been eradicated? Whenever you talk about eradication of diseases or whenever you talk about modern medicine, you only talk about antibiotics, antivirals and vaccines. Why still diabetes is there? Why even advent of, uh, after the advent of statins, the cardiovascular disease incidence has increased? Why it has not been uh, do you know what? Do you know what eradication means? No, whatever. Eradication. You have eradicated polio, you have eradicated malaria a long time back. It is still there. Let's accept that. Okay. But whenever you are... Who eradicated to... malaria when? There was, there was a statement that we have eradicated malaria, but it came back. Where? Who stated that? I mean, see, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. Please show us the link have. where it has I been written. And, and, okay, so when I, when I asked you what eradication means, you basically told me infectious diseases, right? Mm -hmm. So using that term in a non-communicable disease itself is wrong. You are biased when it comes to using that. Which means you don't know anything about non-communicable diseases, what the natural history is, why they are here, what is the causative factors. Which is why you are using that term eradication wrongly. You can't use that term for a non-communicable disease. You can't say oh, we will eradicate diabetes. The only way we can eradicate diabetes is to eradicate humanity. Right? So that is not right. Why diabetes is still not under control and why the incidence of diabetes, cardiovascular disorders, thyroid is constantly increasing even after advent of so many drugs? That's what my question is. Do you think the population is receding or increasing? The people, number of people living in the world? But what about the percentage? It does, I don't think it no, matters. Answer my question. It doesn't mean it doesn't matter whether the number is increasing. Ultimately, it boils down to percentage. How many people? Have so when, so when to simply answer your question. So when Ayurveda and these ancient traditional practices were uh, in use about centuries ago, the life expectancy of uh, people in India were somewhere in the twenties. You know, people used to die in the twenties and thirties. Absolutely. Yeah. Right. Now, now listen to me. So now after that, modern medicine, science, scientific methodology, all these came up and people started living to 70s and 80s, right? That is when we figured out that the more, the, the older you become, you will get to see more and more different types of diseases that happens as people age. And when the number of people increase and the number of people who live, survive, the life expectancy increases, these also increase. It has nothing to do with medical science. So don't please don't bring that argument again here. It's wrong. Sir, statins were uh, invented for management of uh, hypercholesteremia, triglyceride issues, and also it was supposed to prevent cardiovascular diseases. Am I correct in my statement? Yes, you are. So now, even after around 20 years of its pronounced use by the it is still not under control. That's what my question. Boss, you don't understand. Boss, you don't understand. 
use of statins has improved cardiovascular outcomes so that people are living longer right people are living longer much much longer than before because of these medications so everything is under control nothing is out of control i don't know why you are using that term control and all that now because everything seems to be under control there is no problem there there are large meta analytic reports showing that when people should use statins and how it is going to benefit them the data is there you could not even give me mechanism of action a single drug which i asked okay just there, there is a statement by british medical journal okay they equated 15 more incidences of muscle symptoms eight more of liver events 12 more of kidney events and 14 more of eye conditions per 10000 patients treated for a year and statins were estimated to prevent only 19 heart attacks nine strokes and eight deaths from cardiovascular diseases per 10000 patients treated per year treated for a year yeah so if you okay. if, if you have finished reading your google page no i don't understand why you are bringing this point ah, so my does this make ayurveda scientific no i am saying that you trying to demonize statins does it make ayurveda any better you are supposed to not, talk for ayurveda not, to, not talk for medical see, science point of view i am not here to demean modern medicine what i mean to say is you can you can do that you can demean modern medicine okay i don't i don't even have any interest okay what i am saying is there is definitely a need of any alternative or complementary or supplementary or traditional medicinal systems which can ultimately help benefit people okay if so if tell, tell, us, tell us a formulation like that tell us a formulation that we can use in our daily practice for patients with diabetes or hypercholesteremia for patients with heart attacks we can prevent tell us an ayurvedic formulation which is tested and recommended we'll use it yeah so even even your uh, himalaya leaf 52 is pretty good in managing that abana is good <laughs> come on himalaya is not even real ayurveda i know Please. but uh, there her that's a that, that's a, that's a really nonsense private ayurvedic company made proprietary product and you are talking about them come on i did not expect this from you i thought you were a traditional classical ayurvedic practitioner but how would you understand if i talk to you or talk to you in classical ayurvedic formulations would you be able to understand lip 52 let me let me talk about lip 52 now because you brought it up lip 52 was studied in a randomized controlled double blind study in 1997 by professor flake in the us in a multi center cohort study okay in patients with liver disease and the study showed that patients with advanced liver disease if they consume lip 52 they died more and in patients who did not have advanced liver disease leaf 52 did not do anything it was like placebo only but because they were killing more patients with leaf 52 in patients with cirrhosis the us fda banned the product in the us and now it is known as liver care there where there are more and more lesser number of ingredients being used than in india so that is leaf 52 for you and everything from leaf 52 the company that has published and presented is from the manufacturer themselves i have written ex- ex- exhaustively on this product so let us not talk about lip 52 ever again if you have some other formulation that you can tell us which we can use for diabetes or prevention of heart disease or strokes please tell us for diabetes there is one dhatri nisha yog which is amalaki i mean terminatia chebula and haridra it's a simple two herb formulation which can be used so how does it work in diabetes and where are the studies of it can i can you please uh, tell us the link so that we can check it right now i will just mechanism of action efficacy and safety that's what we look at right when you have a drug i mean you worked in pharmacovigilance and drug industry so you know this so where are the studies on efficacy and safety and pharmacovigilance data on this particular formulation that you have mentioned now okay there are uh... there are two three studies i can say i will share it to you if you want no no you can tell us right now who is the author the first author what is the formulation please tell me i can check patri nisha patti so when i am uh, typing in patri nisha patti on uh, pubmed uh, i am not getting anything in diabetes 
Right. So they have just mentioned just one study where they have mentioned that clinical trial of indigenous compound drug Nisham Laki yeah, that's the same. in diabetes mellitus. That's the same. Yeah. So, so yeah. So in that in that particular study, there was just 25 people, and they were just followed for fortnightly, and they just said that there is improvement in symptoms. So that is not uh, that is not level one, two, three evidence. That is hardly level four evidence. So that does not make it any effective. Uh, any other studies that you have? Because I don't find I can't find anything anymore. All the studies are not by hard to me, sir. Even I no, it is. I mean, see, see, I can explain you see. how how, I, I, how it can work by Ayurvedic ways. If you want, I can share it with you by finding that. No, no. See, we are not here for a pseudoscience class, right? We are here to look at scientific evidence yeah. where we can use something from alternative medicine industry in our day-to-day -day practice, which you have not given us um, almost an hour now. See, ultimately the whole discussion points down to, uh, am I audible? Yeah. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Yeah. yeah. So ultimately the discussion again points down to, we don't have any drug since last 2000 years, which can be even used for a simple thing like fever from Ayurveda. Forget a disease. Something in Ayurveda that can reduce fever, mechanism of action, safety, efficacy, at least a pilot trial. Nothing. And we are talking about treating patients with liver disease in Ayurveda. Can you imagine this? Just imagine how many people are getting misled because of your promotions and uh, your uh, advertisements and whatnot. And there is a whole state machinery to support people like you. This is just crazy. This is why this country is banana republic. We are moving towards the closure of our speech. So this will this will be the last five minutes. Yeah. So I I just want to end my statements uh, with this uh, almost an hour long discussion, which I knew exactly will end end like this, uh, where we don't have any evidence from alternative medicine. I mean, just forget Ayurveda just alone. I mean, you look at the whole Ayush, right? Ayurveda, naturopathy, Siddha, Yunani, homeopathy, which is the biggest joke of all of that. Uh, we have nothing from this particular huge industry that is thriving in India. We have just a lot of beliefs, faith-based uh, medicine that is happening and that is being uh, enforced onto the minds of people. People are getting indoctrinated because of health, because of extensive promotion, unscientific promotion from every angle. And because of which people are so confused about what to go for healthcare. And uh, I mean, not, I mean, nothing personal with, uh, to uh, Vaidya Omkar, but a lot of Vaidyas, you know, on the social media are misleading people with, with things that don't work. You know, for example, he just spoke about Giloy. You know, if somebody does not know about Giloy, they will go and have Giloy and land up in trouble because we have studied Giloy in our papers and it's a nationwide paper which included 13 hospitals which showed that Giloy can harm the liver and cause severe autoimmune hepatitis. It can lead to death in 15% of patients. And it has, there is no proof that Giloy is useful for anything. And it has been promoted for COVID and now a new pandemic will come. It will be there also. No doubt about it. Right. So these things need to be known. See, the whole aspect of doing this particular discussion is that people must be informed about right health care choices. And it is not alternative medicine. See, alternative medicine that works is called medicine. Very famous statement, right? And what we have is scientific medicine. Of course, scientific medicine has its uh, lot of deficiencies, like Vaidya Omkar said, but it is improving. It is improving. It corrects itself. It, it, it accepts errors, unlike Ayurveda and other, other streams where set practices and beliefs are taken from 2000 years and still practice now, uh, harming the people. So what I would like to end with this is that please follow evidence-based medicine. Please look at scientific uh, practices where there is evidence that you can, you can, you yourself can look at. You know, it, it's so easy. Medical science is so easy because the evidence is there. I mean, you want to know the side effects of a drug, you just have to put in Google and you'll get it. But if you want to look at the side effect of an Ayurvedic formulation, on the formulation, it will be written safe to consume. Natural, herbal and safe. So this is the kind of differences that we live with. 
So please be well informed regarding your health choices and always appreciate evidence-based practices in healthcare because that is what is going to be beneficial for you. So these are my words. If somebody wants to add to this, please do. Okay, I'll just add my points, my closure statement. Basically for everyone who is listening, please remember that Ayurveda is a system of medicine which is proven for two thousands of years. It is being, it is 100% evidence-based. If you feel that whatever Ayurveda practitioners are doing is good for you, please go ahead. It's not always only if the paper is published in a research journal, that means the science is correct, okay? There are a number of incidences where the research papers are flawed, fraudulent, and they have been taken back, retracted. Many drugs, even after phase four, for all four phases of clinical trials, they get into the market, work for 12, 12, 10, 12 years, and then banned. But over those 10, 12 years, whatever damage they cause to your body, that remains there for generations, okay? So if you feel that you can trust the tradition and evidences of people who are been taking the medicines for so long, please go ahead, make your own choice. There is no compulsion that you should go to allopath or uh, sorry, modern medicine or Ayurveda or homeopathy, whichever system of medicine you feel comfortable with, please go ahead. That's it. You can end this now. Um, we'll... Yeah, no, no, we cannot end this now because you just fear mongered all the audience here on something known as chemophobia. Uh, by the Omkar, I will not let you do that. What did I do? Right, I will not let you do that. So what you have just said now, Ayurveda is an evidence-based practice. You have not proven anything. It is not an evidence-based practice, number one. Number two, there are modern medicines that have been evidence-based and has been used since decades and decades without any issues. Everything is chemicals. Do you think that Ayurvedic herbals are uh, natural and there are, uh, there are nothing uh, chemical in it? It's all plant chemicals that can harm. So everything is chemicals. There is nothing known as modern medicines that are synthetic and not, uh, and they are the only ones that are chemical. This fear-mongering has to sh stop. This is chemophobia. You, you can't just end a session by fear-mongering the audience here. I will not allow it. And whatever you have said, is I repeat, complete, complete lies and deceit. You cannot fraud people like this with your statements. I'm, I'm ending the session now. Uh, let us close. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, everyone, for coming. And thanks, Vedya Omkar and Liver Doctor, for hosting this session. Uh, thanks, everyone. Have a great day.